You go to Israel, the blacks are just treated like dogs. And is that right? Shouldn't we take a stand for what's wrong and be the change and the difference? I, I don't want to change the culture. You are probably here right now in the year 2018. Africans, men, women, and children are being sold at slave auctions in Libya. What you may not have heard is that Israel, the recipient of more US aid than any other country in the world, is also putting tens of thousands of Africans at risk of torture at the hands of those very slave traders. How did these refugees come to find themselves? in Israel to begin with, and why is Israel now experiencing them all? First of all, Israel is in Africa, I mean connected to Africa, Northeast Africa, and as African people flee the dictatorship, oppressing them, ethnically cleansing them, they fled to every direction, including Northeast to Israel. For those fled to Israel, believed its claim to be democracy and so that a state supposedly established to provide a safe haven for refugees would understand them and grant them asylum. But they were wrong. In 2012, Israel built a high-tech fence on its border, cutting the country off from the rest of African content to ensure no more refugees could enter to the country. And once completed, the government set into the task of forcing out the 65,000 of African refugees that had already managed to make it to the country. At the first, Israel feared what the world would say if it sent this refugee right back to the torture they felt from. So, Instead of deporting them, it announced an official policy of make their life miserable in order to drive them all out. Hundreds of Israeli chief rabbis issued a joint religious edict decreeing that it is a sin against God to rent apartment to African refugees. Israel's political leaders basically accused the African of being incorrigible criminals and of spreading diseases. And for years, the government outright refused to examine the refugee request. When it finally began to, it earned itself the distinction of having a higher refugee rejection rate than any other country in the world, over 99%. And then the government built the largest detention center in the world and rounded into it thousands of refugees off the streets of Tel Aviv and other Israeli cities. All this in order to make their lives miserable so that they would buckle to the pressure, relent, grudgingly relent, and agree to self-deport back to Africa. In this way, Netanyahu managed to ethnically cleanse the country of between a third and one half of all African refugees in just five years. All this was bad enough, but now an all new evil spirit is sweeping across the globe, buoyed by a worldwide wave of white supremacy. And Netanyahu now realizes that it's no longer necessary to coerce consent from these African refugees in order to deport them. And Netanyahu's new plan is to simply round up the remaining 35,000 African refugees and physically force them out of the country. If any refugee refused to leave Israel, Israel will jail them for life. In December, the measure passed in the Israeli parliament with a large majority, and the country's Supreme Court gave the policy its stamp of approval. Netanyahu is now beginning to boast about Israeli xenophobia and trying to convince some EU allies to adopt its racist policies and purchases high-tech fences to keep refugees 
from reaching Fortress Europe. If Israel is allowed to expel its remaining African refugees, this will send a clear message to the European Union that it's legitimate for any country to adopt anti-refugee rules and keep out black and brown people that are fleeing for their lives without even a sense of shame. Now, let's not pretend that Israel is some kind of safe haven for black folks. In recent years, the government raised rhetoric has led to a lot of vigilante violence against this community. African refugees have been murdered by Israeli lynch mob across the countries. Even the babies of African refugees they have been violently attacked. In Tel Aviv, a kindergarten was firebombed, and a one-year-old baby was stabbed in the head. No Israel has ever been sentenced to jail for any of these savage hate crimes. But the fate that awaits these refugees if they are forced out of Israel will be far worse. Israel has bribed the government of Rwanda with tens of millions of dollars to agree to take in the refugees that Israel expels. But the refugees aren't granted status there. Instead, their documents are confiscated and they are quickly forced to leave the country and begin their search for safe haven all over again, from scratch. Seeking protection in Europe, they are falling into captivity in Libya, where they are tortured and raped, mutilated and murdered. Because Israel is so heavily dependent upon U.S. support. American citizens are actually in position to end this ethnic cleansing before it's completed. Out of fear of offending supporters of Israel, the mainstream media refuses to report critically on the country's race wars. But we can help circumvent this censorship by sharing this video and others about Israel's horrific treatment of African refugees. Let your family, friends, and community leaders know how you feel about the racism you are supporting with your tax dollars. And urge them to join you to speak out against it. If you are disgusted by the return of slavery, don't just get angry, get active. Get active. Get active. And do something to stop even more black people being sold into bondage. Today. Today. Today, in 2018. You go to Israel, the blacks are just treated like dogs. And is that right? Shouldn't we take a stand for what's wrong? <laughs>